Good morning, and welcome to Jamestown United Methodist Worship Service. We are so happy you're here to worship with us this morning. Now, some of you guys may be joining us from the warmth of your bed. You're still curled up in bed as you watch, while others may be sitting on their living room couch with a nice cup of coffee. Now, some of you may be joining us after a long day at work. No matter how you're joining us or where you are joining us from, we are happy you're here for worship. Now at Jamestown United Methodist Church, this is a special Sunday because it's Confirmation Sunday. And so in this morning's worship service, you will see five of our confirmands helping out in leading the service this morning. And so we hope you enjoy it. But we also have another service, the actual confirmation service, where the students will confirm their faith live at 11 o'clock today. So we hope that you can join us. We're going to be streaming it live. You can join us both on YouTube or on our Facebook, uh, Facebook account. So if you want to join us via YouTube, just go to youtube.com and search for Jamestown Space UMC. And you can watch the service live at 11 from YouTube. Or you can go to our Facebook page at Jamestown UMC and watch it live there. Now, if you're watching this service after Sunday morning and will have missed the live service, don't worry, the service will be recorded and will be still be posted on Facebook and YouTube throughout the week so you can watch it. So we hope you can join us today at 11 o'clock for a live service. We are so happy that you are here to worship with us this morning and we hope and pray that you experience God as you worship. Let us pray. Lord, we, your people, gather across space and time. From different homes, we gather together virtually this morning to worship you. And Lord, we come to you with joyful hearts, some of us, and others of us come to you with heavy hearts. We come to you ready to worship, but we may have some to-do lists on our minds or some concerns and worries that plague us. And so, Lord, as we enter into worship, we lay these at your feet. We give you our worries and concerns. We give you our to-do lists. We give you the things that consume us and take up space in our hearts and our minds. And we trust you with those things as we lay them down this morning. We pray that as we begin to worship that you would open our hearts and open our minds to hear you, to see you, and to experience you. For you are the God of all peace who calms the storms of our hearts and our minds. And so may we worship you with all of our hearts and all of our minds this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I save? I will speak my word to them 
whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you Many voices are speaking to us today, in the movies, on concert stages, on television. Today, Lord, we choose to listen to your voice, to respond to your desires, to follow your highest path for us. Many voices are speaking to us today, in our homes, in our friendships, and in our community. Today, Lord, we choose to listen to your voice, to respond to your desires, to follow your highest path for us. Many voices are speaking to us today through celebrities, commercials, and social media. Today, Lord, we choose to listen to your voice, to respond to your desires, to follow your highest path for us. As many voices ring in our ears, we say that we choose to listen to your voice. We do what pleases you, and to stay true to the path you have lovingly set before us. Strengthen each of us to choose the high road, to live up to the greatness you placed within us, and to honor you in all our ways. Lord, we will listen to your voice. Amen. I've worked here at JUMC for eight years and have walked with nine confirmation classes. Getting to watch these young people claim their faith year after year has been such a gift. The experiences our confirmands have are made possible because of your tithes and offerings. As we prepare to celebrate the class of 2020 and ready the next group of young people to learn about their faith, we thank you and encourage you to continue your giving faithfully either online through the JUMC app with PushPay or by mailing your check to the church. Thank you. <music> The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. This morning's scripture is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? 
The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let us pray. O oh God, open us up, open our eyes that we might see, open our ears that we might hear, open our hearts that we might feel, and then, O oh God, open our hands that we might serve you and our neighbors. It's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Robert Fulgham has suggested that the kids' song, The Itsy Bitsy Spider, a song we just heard a few moments ago, that that song is a quintessential American anthem, is the quintessential American anthem. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout, down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain, so the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. It's a kid's song, but it holds a timeless truth in it. And perhaps that's why Fulgham calls it the quintessential American anthem. But I would suggest it's the quintessential human anthem. I mean, think about it. We climb, we climb the ladder of success, the road, the glory, the mountain of life, whatever way you want to define it. And why do we climb? Well, perhaps the light is better up there. The view is better up there. The pay is better up there. The higher we climb, the thinner it gets. There are a variety of reasons for climbing but we climb, and then in life, and then at life, at some point, the rain comes. There's the lost opportunity, the broken heart, the failed test, the devastating diagnosis, the severed uh, relationship, the severe betrayal, the pandemic of a century. The rain comes. Just when you believed that you were at the top, the rain comes, and it's as if the rug is pulled from beneath your feet. But eventually, the sun returns. Out comes the sun and dried up all the rain, which means that good things will take place in life as well. The new opportunity, the new chance, the once in a lifetime, you were in the right place at the right time for that opportunity, and the Lord smiled and the door opened. So the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. With each washout, you start again. You start from ground zero and start the climb again. About this song, you see the spider was not easily deterred. The spider was persistent in the face of adversity. The spider started over and over again after every washout, which I suppose is the call that this song makes on our lives, that we are to get up and climb even after the washout, to look, to look for the sun after the rain. Or in other words, that we are to live in hope, the call of hope in our lives. Well, the passage we just heard a few moments ago from the book of Isaiah are words calling the people of God to live in hope. Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even the youth will faint and grow weary, the young will fall exhausted, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not grow weary, they shall walk and not faint. It's the quintessential hymn for the people of God, words that have comforted the faithful down through the ages. It is the call of hope in the face of adversity. And notice in that passage, the word weary is used three times. It's a relatively short passage, and yet the word weary appears three times. 
which I believe is appropriate for us today. I don't know about you, but I know some people, I, I know some people who are weary, a bit weary of the pandemic, who are weary of uh, social unrest, who are weary of economic hardship. I'm sure people in our midst who are dealing with physical exhaustion, people who are dealing with personal loss, people who have regrets, and they're weary. Weary. We hear these words from Isaiah and we say, we want some of that. We need some of that. Now as we hear these words from Isaiah, it's important to know the context out of which these words were penned. The text uh, emerges from one of the most difficult times in Israel's life. It's called the exile. It was a terrible time in which the country was invaded and destroyed. The best and the brightest were carried away to live in exile and captivity in Babylon. They lived there against their will. You can imagine that they were heart sick, that they were filled with anxiety, longing to be reconnected with their homes and their community, despair and dread running rampant. It was an awful time, and the people were weary. That was the situation in which Isaiah penned these words. And he says to them, in essence, turn away Turn away from your despair and your trouble and your grumblings and instead turn toward God. That's how he begins this beautiful statement of faith. Have you not known, have you not heard the Lord is an everlasting God? He directs their attention to God. Have you not known, have you not heard everlasting God, one who does not faint or grow weary? It is a word of hope and promise to people who are downtrodden, to people who are weary. And what is the hope? Where is the hope in this passage? Note that word everlasting. The Lord is an everlasting God, Isaiah says. Everlasting, which means that God is not limited by time, that God is active through all time, the past, the present, the future. God is not temporary. God is not a part-time God. God doesn't come and go, but God is constant. God is the creator of the ends of the earth, which means that God is not limited by time or space. It means that the one who created all things is powerfully present in all times and in all places. We may grow faint and weary, but God never does. We may be discouraged, but God does not grow discouraged. Why? Because His understanding is unsearchable, because His ways are not our ways. Now note in this passage, Isaiah is not making the promise that God's people will never experience hardship or disappointment or challenge. That is not the promise in this hymn, in this text. The promise is that God will sustain and renew and strengthen those who wait on Him. And so what does it mean to wait for the Lord? Well, I believe to wait for the Lord means that we do not lean on our own understanding. In other words, we don't have with absolute knowledge and clarity what's going to happen in the future, how things are going to turn out. We wish we did. We wish we could predict what tomorrow holds, what the next six weeks might hold, what the next six months might hold. But without that knowledge, we can be overcome by a sense of powerlessness, by a sense of unknowing. And so, unless we wait on the Lord, we allow that sense of powerlessness and fear and dread to overwhelm us. Isaiah says that those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. I believe what Isaiah is saying there is that rather than anxiously and impatiently trying to 
figure out what is going to happen, we should instead simply focus on what God is going to be doing next, looking for how God is operating in our world and in our lives, looking for how God is going to show up next. Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life, in an interview several years ago, he said this, he said, life is a series of problems. Either you are in one now, you're coming out of one, or you're getting ready to go into another one. Yes, he says, we can reasonably expect to be happy here on earth, but happiness is not the goal. The goal of life is to grow into being more Christ-like. Warren continued, this past year has been the greatest year of my life, but also the hardest year, as his wife Kay was diagnosed with cancer. Warren continues, I used to think that life was a series of hills and valleys. You go through a dark time and then you go up on the mountain top, then you come back down from the mountain top, and then you go back up. He said, I don't think that way anymore. He said, rather than hills and valleys, I believe life is more like this. It's like the two rails of a railroad track. And at all times, something good and hopeful is going on, while at the same time, something daunting and challenging is going on. A series of tracks, railroad tracks, where something good is going on, while at the same time, something daunting is taking place. I find that to be such a helpful image. Rather than, rather than focusing on the hills and the valleys of my life, wondering, um, anxiously trying to figure out what's going to happen next, will it be rain or sunshine, I can instead wait and trust, looking for what God is going to do next, looking for how the Lord will renew my strength. And how does the Lord renew our strength? In his book, The Tracks of a Fellow Struggler, John Claypool reflects on this passage from Isaiah 40. And he says that God promises three kinds of strength for those who wait on the Lord. The first strength... The first strength is to soar, is to soar on wings like eagles, to mount up with wings like eagles. Sometimes, sometimes God lifts us up onto the mountaintop, above the worries and the anxieties of this world. This is a kind of exuberant strength. Our spirits soar, our hearts sing. We even laugh until our sides hurt. Those are soaring and beautiful moments in life. I found those moments to be rare though, and though rare, they can be very life-giving and life-transforming. But that's not the only kind of strength. Claypool goes on and says, that that the Lord also provides a kind of strength. We don't soar like eagles, but instead we run without growing weary. This is the kind of strength that um, is perhaps most common. And though it's not as rewarding as that strength of soaring like eagles, it nevertheless is the most common. It's the kind of strength, Claypool says, that enables us to do what needs to be done, to maintain the home, to run the business, to teach the class, to care for the neighbor, to take care of a loved one, to serve others, to study for an exam. It may not feel like soaring, but nevertheless, the Lord gives us the strength to run and not be weary. John Claypool notes that the third kind of strength, the final kind of strength the Lord gives according to this passage from Isaiah is the strength to walk and not faint. Claypool said he discovered the power of this strength as he watched his 10-year-old daughter, Laura Lou, battle leukemia. About this kind of strength, John Claypool says, now I am sure that to those looking for the spectacular, this kind of strength may sound insignificant 
Who wants to be slow to a walk, to creep along inch by inch, just barely above the threshold of not fainting? That may not sound like much of a religious experience, but believe me, in the darkness where I have been, it is the only form of the promise that fits the situation. He continues, I honestly confess that I have no wings with which to fly or legs on which to run, but listen, by the grace of God, I am still on my feet. I have not fainted. I'm hanging in there, enduring with patience what I cannot change but have to bear. Sometimes all you can do is trudge on step by step, trusting that there's a help and a strength that will keep you from falling. The good news, the good news is that even when your strength has given out, God's strength is everlasting. God's strength is inexhaustible. There's that part of the story that's so wonderful there in Pilgrim's Progress, the end of the story, the two pilgrims, Christian and Hopeful, they're about to get to the glorious city, a place that they have been journeying now for some great period of time. They discover, though, that to get to the glorious city, they must cross through a river. There's no way to go around the river, no way to get to the city without going through the river. They see the spirals of the city on the other side of the river and that motivates them and draws them into the water. As Christian wades out into the river, he grows afraid. The wind begins to, to blow and the waves begin to toss and, and, and go back and forth. He's filled with fear as the, as the waves wash over him. He, he turns to his friend, Hopeful, and he shouts that the waves are billowing over him and that he's afraid. Hopeful, seeing the anxiety of his friend, hearing it in the voice of his friend, Hopeful speaks back words to Christian. And Hopeful says to him, Be of good cheer, my brother. I have felt the bottom, and it is good. Be of good cheer, my brother. I have felt the bottom, and it is good. Friends, no matter where you are, no matter the kind of strength that you are relying on in this moment in your life, whether you are soaring or running or simply walking, I hope that you will never forget that with God, with God, the bottom holds. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank you so much for being here with us in worship today. Hear this, our benediction. May the grace and peace of God be with you as you go forth through this chaotic world. May you feel the love and comfort each and every day. We ask that you stay tuned uh, at 11 o'clock today. Uh, we will be having a confirmation service uh, welcoming the class of 2020 into our church. You can join us on Facebook or YouTube uh, at 11 o'clock. Hope to see you there.